What's up, YouTube? This is Artist at MC, and out getting some sun, and I'm gonna do something I don't usually do on my channel, which is actually read some motherfucking comic books. That's my stack I've had sitting around for a while. I've been doing everything else but reading comics and making videos. It's just like sapping my creative energies being stuck in a house like that. So. I'm going to read these and give you some reactions to some of this shit that I'm reading, which is uh, some Hellions, some Fallen Angels, some X-Men, Marauders, basically all the X-Books that you haven't seen in a while. So, see you then. Peace. Alright, what's up YouTube? I'm back again and I just finished Hellions number one. Um, I will tell you, off the bat, I like the art on this book and I like the team some of the people on the team which is one of the reasons why I picked up this book anyway I'm a Sinister fan I'm a huge Havoc fan and I love uh, Asian Psylocke they even like Wild Child a bit okay? and because it's the Hellions I know the history with the Hellions being Emma Frost's team you know in the Hellfire Club or whatnot. So I was kind of interested to see what was going on in this. Um, on reading it, the first issue is a good thick book, and the art is really good. Art is really solid. Um, I like the design for Havoc. I like the colors that they used. I like the designs for Quan. How they drew her. She does look like a woman. <laughs> you know, she's not overly masculine in some scenes, but. That was about it. Uh, getting a little bit more record because I'm out of sequence with everything that's happening in the X-Men. Um, I read the initial um, X-Men books, uh, Powers of X and House of X. I read through a couple of them and then stopped. And then they start coming out with the rest of these books. So I'm kind of jumping all over in this story to find out where they're coming from that impetus. But it's still mutants that I know. It's still characters that I know. And one of the things I'm not liking right now in this story is I don't like the way Sinister is. Sinister sounds like... It's like they're making him Loki light. Okay? Where he's kind of fucking comical. And that's not Sinister for me. That's not Sinister. Sinister is old as shit. Okay? He's a Victorian era scientist and was kind of, you know, upper crust, so he's kind of stuffy. And he's always been that. He's ignat ignat ignatic. Igmatic figure to where he will talk to you, but he's serious. He's not a jokester. He's not somebody joking. Because what he does can be really fucking scary. He should be the closest thing to the devil you can run into walking on earth if you show up in his fucking lap. It's only two dudes you really need to be afraid of coming to your house. And that's Mr. Sinister and Dark Beast. You're going to get fucked up. There's nothing good is going to happen to you after that. Nothing good. Apocalypse shows up. Maybe you made the cut. Maybe you're you becoming one of the, the four horsemen, okay? Magneto shows up, and you're a mutant, you're good. He probably conscripting you into the Brotherhood. Dark Beast or Sinister show up? Mutant or not, you fuck. It's going to be some, it's, you're going to have some dark days ahead of you. And your clones, if you get in Sinister's lab, will have dark days too. He will clone your ass and he will run experiments on every one of you. And that's one of the things that makes Sinister a really intriguing character to me because he's more obsessed with his science. Doesn't necessarily care about all that other shit, but he's obsessed with his science and what he wants to unlock in the, in the mutant gene. Um, Psylocke, the Quan character, where 
what you classically know as being Psylocke, which is the, the um, Asian ninja assassin. I love that character. I love the character design. I love her power set. Now, since they've split her back into two separate people, so there's Betsy Braddock and there's Kwan, so you can have both of them existing, I never really cared for Betsy Braddock. And I thought it was a good idea that um, Chris Claremont merged, got rid of that character, and that character ended up merged with um, uh, Quan into Psylocke because it made the character more fucking interesting. I mean, it was. I, I don't care about it. She's run. Betsy Braddock is running around free now, and I can't bring myself to give a shit about Excalibur. I just don't care about the character. She wasn't that interested in the beginning. Okay. So, you have her there. I like having her there. I haven't seen her much in the X-Men books because I haven't read them that much to see where she goes. But having her as the leader of this team is kind of an issue for me because the other person on, on the team that's one of my favorites, which is Havoc. And Havoc is a leader. He's always been a leader. When he popped up on X-Factor, he was a leader. Even up until recently, where he was on the diversity team of Avengers and X-Men, or Uncanny X-Men, or whatever the fuck it was, Uncanny Avengers, whatever it was, he was a leader. He is a leader. This dude is like a ridiculous powerhouse, more so than Cyclops. More so than Cyclops. He's the younger brother, but not by much, but he is like way more powerful, way more controlled. And they have him on this team because he kind of flipped out. That sounds silly. Okay. The rest of the people on the team, well, Wild Child, I like Wild Child. And I like that they're using the character design from um, Age of Apocalypse where he looks like he's dressed up like Sabretooth. That was my favorite iteration of Wild Child when they did the Age of Apocalypse storyline and it's an alternate timeline, and Wild Child was like Victor Creed's like dog. <laughs> that's basically what he was, because that's what he is. He's like a poor man's or a younger version, Sabretooth with no control. And I like him being paired with Sabretooth that way, right? So having him in this costume, it harkens back to that, and he's just a Sabretooth like. It's, it's fine. If it was if this was Teen Titans, he'd be fucking Beast Boy without a sense of humor, okay? That's just what it is. Um, other characters on here, Scout Hunter and Empath, I know who they are. Empath is an original Hel Hellion. I believe he got killed before. And Scout Hunter has his ties to um, Mr. Sinister because he's responsible, or one of the people who were, took part in the Mutant Massacre. He was one of Sinister's original Marauders that went into the um, sewers and tried to wipe out the fucking Morlocks. Okay, he was part of that crew. So I see that connection there. Empath has a connection to the Hellions. Scalp Hunter has a connection to the Marauders and Mr. Sinister. That's all fine. The rest of the stuff that they throw in together, I don't give a shit about this ridiculous looking um, nanny and orphan maker. I don't know. He looks like a knockoff Iron Man Sentinel. This is one of these characters that came along when I wasn't reading X-Men. And I care really nothing about his ass. At all. Same thing with uh, Nanny. This egg-headed lipstick bullet. I don't know. It looks like a bullet bill from, from uh, Mario Brothers. With longer legs. It's just... Uh... Any anyway. Um... The story was interesting, setting up the team and why, why these people are on the team, but I'm not liking Psylocke being a leader, not that she's not capable, I just don't like your, your frontline fighter being the leader. Two people should never be leaders on the X-Men. Wolverine is one. Psylocke is another one. These are not people who need to be leaders. They don't. They need to be on the team, but they don't need to be the leader. They cannot be the leader of the team. That flies in the face completely of who they are and how they function. These two characters are killers. K 
can be killers all day long. You don't have the killer being your leader. You have the killer in the background in case your leader needs to call on them to do some of that killing shit. Psylocke doesn't need to be the leader, but being that she's the only woman on this book, there you go. It's called Hellions and there's no Emma Frost in it. It goes to the next female and the next telepathic, telekinetic, whatever the fuck. And here you go. Quan. Now they ain't calling her Psylocke. I'm calling her Psylocke because that's fucking Psylocke to me. I don't give a shit about Betsy Braddock, what the hell you call her. This is Psylocke and that's how I recognize her and that's how I enjoy her. Alright. So the story where these these mutants have all committed some kind of crime on Krakoa and they're brought before the Quiet Council and then are going to be punished in some kind of way because their their mutant abilities are some somehow inconvenient. I don't know what the fuck that means. <sighs> Interesting, but I don't know, whatever. They, they're trying to make a story out of this. The one thing I'm not liking is the writing. Everybody speaks with the same voice and that is a problem that means you cannot fucking write necessarily if I have different characters who have a lineage and I'm looking at this table of Professor Xavier Storm, Jean Apocalypse, Mr. Sinister um oh what's his name I forget, oh, fuck him, I forget his name now Exodus. All these characters have their own voice. They have the way that they talk, which has been established in many other fucking comic books. Okay? There is no way I should read this book and everybody sounds the same. Talking the same way, using the same profanity, which I use a lot of curse words. Okay? I'm just relaxed and just talking, right? I'm just talking. Every character in this book talks like that. And it's irritating to me. Because I know where profanity has its place and where it doesn't. So I'm relaxed just shooting the shit and talking shop. I'm going to relax. You're going to hear some curse words. Because it's relaxed. Right? But in this comic, being that some of these characters are from generationally different places, they shouldn't all talk the same. And they shouldn't all just be throwing around curse words like it's, it's no big deal. I mean, it doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't even make sense for the character. So, whatever. The one highlight to this issue, outside of the art for me, was seeing the ending. And seeing Madeline Pryor show up. Which, I love Madeline Pryor. Goblin Queen, love the Goblin Queen. I'm waiting for them to put her on my freaking future fight game so I can run her instead of running Jean Grey. Because she should be just as strong, if not just a tier below. But I like Madeline Pryor, and I like Madeline Pryor and Havoc together, and that comes from reading um, Mutant X back in like the late 90s, 2000. And it was a dimensional displaced Havoc put into another world where he was the leader of the X-Men and his team consisted of alternate versions of different X-Men alternate version of Beast, alternate version of Angel um, Storm Madeline Pryor and Iceman okay now these alternate versions were versions that happened in the original X-Men line. That stuff happened to them and it got reversed in the original continuity. In this dimension, it did not get reversed. Storm was bitten by a vampire and Storm did develop vampiric powers. She was Bloodstorm. She wasn't Storm. She was Bloodstorm. And she was a freaking vampire. Warren Worthington, Angel, turned into the Fallen. He had leathery wings and stuff like that. He looked like freaking Nemesis Enforcer from G.I. Joe movie, the G.I. Joe the movie. He looked badass. He breathed fire and everything. It was awesome, right? 
Iceman just went by Bob Drake and he was touched by a frost giant and he could not turn back out of his ice form. But he froze everything he touched. Okay, so there's a dilemma there. And then Beast screwed himself up, experimenting like he did. And instead of turning himself just blue and growing fur, the motherfucker turned green and developed gills and hooves and all kind of shit. He fucked himself up and was kind of retarded. Think of it like a small furry Hulk. Okay, so there was a lot of stuff going on. And in place of Jean Grey, you had Madeline Pryor who when Jean Grey died and was replaced by Mr. Sinister with Madeline Pryor, Madeline Pryor stayed on the team as the Goblin Queen and helped. And her and Alex Summers, Havoc, were an item like Scott and Jean were. Alex and, and Madeline Pryor were an item and they had a child. And they were the X-Men team for that dimension. That shit kicked ass. That was a good story. I love that team. I love getting to see Havoc pushed up to a place where he can be his own fucking hero and you can see how badass he can be on his own. Love that from that day forward. Right? But as shit happens with comics, it killed that story. Mutant X got a TV show that had absolutely nothing to do with that damn comic so they killed the comic and ran with that ridiculous fucking TV show. It was the 90s. So, from that, they brought Alex Summers back. And since then, to me, he's just fucking floundered. They they use him. Sometimes they don't. I think his last heyday was in um, War of Kings. Because it was the third Summers brother that nobody knew about. Which was fucking Genesis, right? But, I say all that to say, I like having Madeline Pryor and Havoc in the same book. Because... Hopefully, I can see the reconnection of those two as being an item. That they develop that into this main continuity and develop it. I'll read the book just for that. To see if that develops and just to see fucking Sinister be Sinister. This comical, low-key light, kind of joking, kind of silly shit Sinister. Not liking that. I like the design. Design is badass. But I don't like the rest of that. So... Overall, it's interesting. It's just the first book. So I'll see what it is and issues after that. But this was just my little bit to, since I never actually do comic uh, book reviews on a, on a geek page, I figured I'd read some since I had, I had time. I usually read them, but I would read them and then actually discuss it with you guys. So that's it. Um, that's just Hellions number one. I'll read the rest of them and give some of my opinions. It'll probably come up on a Shop Talk. Definitely will come up on Shop Talk Live. But like, share, subscribe. I'm going to get out of the sun and go uh, make some dinner. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace. <laughs> You want to talk to me? You're right here. Think you're awake, but it's all an illusion. Hey, 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 hey.